In this video, I'm going to show you the method I use to create game ready assets from scratch in Blender for my Unreal game. I'll go over how I plan, sculpt, retopo, bake, export, and import the assets into Unreal. I'm Jameson, the developer of Loon, a survival game I've been developing over the last year. If you want to check out the game, download the free demo on itch.io and purchase it if you want to support the project. Since the last devlog, I released a couple builds addressing the inventory system, smoothing out the interaction and tool usage. Once that was done, it was time to update the artwork on the primitive harvest tool, as it's used to harvest wood and stone, necessary for the upcoming building system. I thought it would be interesting to show my workflow for building these assets. Starting off, I did research on primitive stone axes. There are different styles throughout the world, depending on the geology and technology available. I decided on a hybrid design that resembles both an axe and pickaxe, as the tools can be used to harvest both wood and stone in the lunar world. In Blender, I started the modeling using the axe handle from my low-res prototype axe. I had already done the work setting the proportions, so this gave me a good starting point. Here, I switch into sculpt mode and remesh with a small voxel size. For objects of this scale, I usually start around 0.3 centimeters and add more density later if I need it. From here, I sculpt out the handle as if it were a rough carved into shape with primitive tools. I reference the prototype axe for proportions. Next, I sculpt the axe head, starting from a cube, and using a similar technique to the handle, I shaped it like it had been rough chipped into shape. Once the main shape of the tool is in place, I added some materials so I could gauge the look at this point to see if it was heading in the right direction. I used materials I had built for prior assets and tweaked them for the axe. I applied a mask to the handle to paint in some bark material to break up the procedural wood grain. This is a great technique to use, and with a bit of material knowledge you can add as many layers as you need. This will all be baked down in the end, so I don't worry too much about the performance of the shader here. After that I start adding the twine details that bind the axe head to the handle. I start by trying to wrap a spline around the boolean cutout of the handle shape, but it wasn't cooperating. So I opted for a simple cylinder, wrapped the spline, added geometry, and shaped it to fit the handle. I added materials to check the texture scaling here. Looks good. I do the same for the stone axe head.
Now on to retopologizing. I use a blender add-on called Retopoflow. It does a great job, it's pretty stable, and is fast for this type of work. It requires a solid object to work, so I merge the sculpt and twine details and remesh that object to create a solid object to retopo over. If you try to retopo over something with lots of holes or other back faces, you run into problems, so I recommend this workflow for this type of asset. Once I have a decent low poly model, I'll unwrap the UVs so I can bake the texture to it. I start by marking the seams and do a couple iterations of unwrap until I get something with low distortion. From here I tweak the UV layout, making sure I have a bit of space between the islands, but trying to use as much of the image as possible. I realized I accidentally dumped my bark mask by not saving it, so I recreated it. This is not the first time this has happened. Next, I bake the textures. This requires a specific setup. It's not hard, just a few details to make sure to cover. It's not necessary, but for simplicity, I merged the sculpt models into one single mesh, then selected the high-res sculpt, then the low-poly bake target. I make sure the bake target is set up with simple material, with just the textures I'm baking to, and select the diffuse texture Make sure I choose Diffuse and turn off environment affecting the bake. Press Bake and in a few minutes the procedural materials are baked into a single texture. I save this, then I do the same for the normal map, making sure that the Y direction is flipped for Unreal compatibility. From there, I do an FBX export. Selected objects only, and smoothing normals generated from face are normally all I select here to move the models to Unreal. In Unreal, I pull in the FBX files and the image textures, set up a simple, cheap material using only diffuse and normal, and apply it. Looks like there's a few issues here visually. With a prop I normally wouldn't worry about the silhouette issues around my twine, but this will be up close to the player, so I'll take note of this for when I do later updates to the assets. I add it to my tool item to start integrating it into the gameplay.
looks like I forgot to add collision, because the interaction isn't working. So I'll go back and add it. Okay, it's working now. Should be able to pick it up and interact with it and swing it. I'll be going back to a lot of these assets later to do cleanup, but this should work for now. So that's a pretty good snapshot of the process I use for creating static assets for in-game. This took about 6 hours overall to do, with a few breaks for dinner, and to play with the doggo. Hit the thumbs up if you liked the video, and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or feedback. Download the free demo of Gloomin on itch.io to check it out. Make sure to purchase the game if you want to support the project. Until next time, thanks for watching.